Before I start today's video, can I just say thank you to everybody who has sent me emails, those people who've donated money. Uh, you may not have heard from me yet to say thank you. Uh, it's just been a very busy time and uh, I, I do thank you, those people who've sent Super Chats and donated. It's absolutely um, wonderful. Thank you so much and I will get round to it. So many emails, over 600 odd emails to wade through yet. Um, and, and everybody who's left comments, of course, and I apologise if comments disappear. Can I just say, if you put a link in with your comment to a video or somewhere else, very often they get sent onto an approval area and it's sometimes very difficult to approve everything and sometimes even YouTube won't even allow me to do that. So I apologise if you think that I'm uh, editing or moderating or changing um, the comments. I try and let everything go. I've been thinking about where we are and what's happening in this situation in the last few months. I've been thinking about it deeply and I've been making these videos and I hope I'm maybe making people think along similar lines or different lines. Certainly people have responded. I've seen that in the numbers of the subscriptions and of course the views and I've been interviewing people, as you've seen, who have uh, different ideas to bring to the table. I really just let those people bring their ideas. I'm not really challenging them. Uh, I'm not really um, advocating them. I'm just letting them express what their ideas are and, and let people make up their mind. I think that's f a sensible way rather than like so much of mainstream media with a bias and trying to bring people down before they've had a chance to advocate their ideas. It seems to me that we are on two train tracks at the moment, running in parallel, if you like. Uh, the, the, there are two trains as we travel along at this moment in time, side by side. One of these trains is heading towards a 1984 George Orwell dystopian future in which we are herded off into some form of camps where people are concentrated. There's a, there's a name for that. It, it may be less drab and miserable as perhaps we've seen in the past, these sort of environments, but nonetheless harsh and severe in as much as being monitored by cameras, uh, having every our move being uh, surveyed, having our bank accounts approving or not approving what we do with our money, having our freedom to travel wherever we so wish across this wonderful land and indeed in other countries across the, their wonderful lands removed. Our, our vehicles, a symbol of freedom which is, which is what a car is, or a van. Those people who, who like to travel in a van life situation where they live in their van or they go caravanning or camping um, or they just go traveling. All of that seems to be not what the state would like us to do anymore. That, that our movements, our freedoms are being taken away, sold to us as necessary because of the planet is warming up to the nth degree that if we don't obey these basic uh, restrictions that everything is going to fold in upon us, the, the planet will warm up and it will be a catastrophe, which of course is not true. It's a myth. It's a lie. It's a, it's a narrative that's being pushed and pushed and pushed that our money will be disappearing and turned into a new form of currency, a digital, a central bank digital currency. These 15 minute cities or 20 minute neighborhoods, low traffic, will be such a desirable thing that everything will be at your fingertips. You will not need to go anywhere else. I mean, firstly, how boring would that be? How boring? What kind of a life would it be? It would be like going camping and never leaving the campsite. Yes, it's nice to go camping. It's great. 
but it's lovely also to go out of the campsite and travel around and look at the scenery and go to the seaside and go to the parks and go to the waterfalls and look at the statues and see the history and look at different types of building, see the geology of the landscape change from a chalk-based landscape with flint to a, a slate-based or to the uh, a, a elliptic limestone of the Cotswolds or wherever it is to climb the, the mountains and sense the fresh air and feel the freedom. How boring would it be just to have everything at your fingertips, the convenience of everything, everything being delivered to you. You don't need to get in the car and do anything. And if you want to experience all of those other things, don't worry, you don't actually have to go there. No, you can have these big screens or these uh, virtual reality goggles that you put on and you can walk into the countryside. You can see anywhere in the world that you want a, a landscape unfolding before you, herds of wildebeest passing majestically. You can see that from a comfy chair in a centrally heated pod with your eyes fixed into some artificial monitors and you will experience that. Perhaps something will blow a little bit of wind artificially produced air pumped into your face to give the illusion that you are standing on a beautiful um, vista and the air is coming through. It may even be artificially sensed, scented. Who wants that? Who really wants that for more than 10 minutes? And you realise, no, this isn't life. Who wants that? But that does seem to be one of the railway tracks, one of the carriages that we're sitting in, that we are going to go. And at some point there will be this diversion, this diversion of the two, the two railway carriages will either go this way or that way. But at the moment they are in parallel. This is not a future that I'm particularly keen to have. I don't want it for my children. I look back at my childhood of being brought up in the late in the 60s and then in the 70s, the freedom to roam, to explore, to walk the dog and go wherever you want, to look into history, to go fishing, to dig up old bottles as I used to do, to climb the downs, to, to go and, and be safe and know that the people in the environment were there to look after me if I was lost, that a policeman would tell me the time and show me how to go home or clip me round the ear if I was being irresponsible and rude. I look at that and that is part of a future that I've seen that's gone, but it's not too late to have that back. Yet if we stay on this particular carriage, if we don't wake up, if we don't say no, then this 1984 predicted future is definitely happening. The other carriage, of course, I don't know if you can sense it's there, isn't it? It's there. This is the carriage to freedom. This is the carriage that says no to what's going on in the 1984 carriage. This is the carriage, I don't know if you can feel it, People in France are protesting madly against Macron. The Dutch farmers in the Netherlands, they've won this marvellous um, thing where they've become the fourth part of the government. I don't fully understand it, but they, they are conquering. They are saying no, they are standing up for their rights. People in this country are marching with placards. They are protesting peacefully. They are saying to the council, like the people I in, um, in, in, uh, interviewed in Thetford, in Norfolk, they're saying to the council, no, we don't want the 15-minute cities. You didn't ask us. You've set up a trial that we have not even requested. You may say it's just to sort of see if it would work, if it was a good idea, but why didn't you ask us first? We'll tell you whether it's even worth putting on the cards, whether it's worth even spending the money on a trial, because let's face it, it would be us that pays for the money on the trial. You didn't ask us. And that's, 
that's the, the sense that I'm getting. It's palpable. People are waking up. People are saying no. They don't want it. They see it. They've seen the warning signs. They've seen and read the book of 1984, and they don't like it. Here in the West, we have had that sense of freedom. We've had that past, as I explained, of my past of running free and coming up with your own things and going on your bikes and doing whatever you damn well please. Even though there were still restrictions there that I was unaware of, I've tasted that freedom. And like many in the West, we don't want that curtailed. And we're seeing through the lies, the lies that the planet is going to explode. The people on this railway carriage know that the people on the other railway carriage have been holding up the signs and saying, it's all doom and gloom. They keep saying 10 years time or 12 years time, the planet is going to be like this. The waters will be up to our necks. There'll be fires all over the place. And those 10 years time elapses. Those 12 years go by and nothing has happened. And, and some events happen and they go, oh, oh, no, no, no. Look at this. That proves it. And you go, but it's one event. It's one. It's not enough. Tell me it's 40 degrees in December for five days in a row and I might believe you. Tell me it's 40 degrees in July in the summer. Then it's like, that's brilliant. Bring it on. It's holiday time. It is a total and utter madness. And they're desperately, desperately trying to persuade you that everything is going bad. So we have wars, of course, to confuse you. We're supposed to be having a, a text message on our phones at any moment. You know, these phones that are listening to us, they're watching us, they're recording us with the cameras, the face recognition when you go into the, into the supermarkets now, the cameras all over the place, collecting your data, the biometrics, which of course you know that you can go and request your data back and say, excuse me, I want that data. You collected that without asking me. I want that back, thank you very much. We can, we've still got the power to do that, to make a admin uh, disaster for them. Hundreds of thousands of people saying, I walked down the street, you seem to have got that on video. Can I have it, please? Because you, you didn't ask me. Oh, I know it's there for my security, just in case, you know, somebody bashes me on the head and nicks my wallet or my phone or whatever. But you didn't ask me, did you? You just took that image of me. So um, you're the state. I want it back, please. There is a process, and I'd made a video about that. They keep telling us of this future. But in the other truck, we know that this is lies. We know that. We sense it. We're doing something about it. We don't want it. But here's the question that I want to ask in this video. Here's the question. In order for the first railway carriage to get to its destination, it's relying on people on both carriages to help build that destination. So there are people in the street, and I watched this the other day when I was out with the lovely Julia and we were sitting, we were having chips. I live on a seaside town and it's beautiful occasionally. I'm not advocating that chips is the most healthiest diet in the world, but just occasionally supporting an independent uh, shop. We'll go down and we'll have chips and we'll watch the world go by. Sometimes we'll sit on the pier on a nice sunny day and eat our chips with salt and vinegar. And it's just fun. It's a very English thing to do. Very British, if you like. And we are watching people in the street laying cables. And I thought to myself, oh, it says uh, super uh, internet or whatever it was, you know, faster fibre internet coming. And I thought, is it? Is it that? Or is it the cables going down for 5G? Is it the thing that's going to be there to help monitor or to frazzle our brain or to keep us under control? Is that what it maybe is? Or I noticed on a tweet this morning in Plymouth, in Plymouth, they've cut down over a hundred trees to make bigger cycle lanes. A hundred trees, some of those perhaps quite old, some not so old, but a hundred trees that have been in a central reservation from what I could see. And more and more of these trees are being made way but for perhaps cycle lanes, but also, of course, for 5G, because 5G needs line of sight. It works better. It doesn't like obstacles in the way, so all of these things. 
And also in London and all the other cities for the ULES schemes, cameras are going up so that they can do these photo, these number plate photo recognitions. And also, of course, biometrics, face recognition cameras are going over. People have to put that in. It isn't the, the people sitting there at the top of the train, the chain, the, the elites, the government, the prime minister and his cronies, the WEF or the WHO. People. We saw this during the pandemic. They may have come out with a vaccine which may or may not, let's say, for the sake of terms and conditions on YouTube, be a safe and effective drug that is helping us. May or may not. You can put the stress wherever you so wish on that. But we saw that it wasn't the WEH, the WEF or the WHO or the Prime Minister going around sticking the needle into people. No, no, no. It was ordinary people, doctors and nurses and people who were trained up, people like you, people like you watching, people like you are digging the streets and laying the cables, people like you are putting the cameras up, people like you are chopping the trees down to make these cycle lanes and getting rid of the cars, people like you are sitting in government offices writing out invoices, demands and court summonses for people who can't pay. People like you are putting in the infrastructure for this new society. And I ask you, are you doing the devil's work? Are you building the prison? Because remember, you could be laying the cables and putting the camera and chopping the trees for a future that you will be also herded into. You are building potentially the prison that you will be inside. Are you doing that? And if so, have you thought about that? And why? Why are you building the prison? For not us, not just everyone else, but for you too. I don't understand that. I don't understand. We need to think about what we're doing. We don't have to build this prison. We can get off. We're on this carriage parallel to the other carriage. We can jump. We can jump from one train to the other train because very soon it's going to make this divergence. Let's be on the train for the future we really want, not the one that we're being told to have.